Ashley Strolon here alongside Davey Siegel of Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Uh, recapping North Wilkesboro once again, of course, second year in a row that the All-Star Race is here. And once again, a driver dominates this one. This year, it's Joey Logano leading 199 of the 200 laps. Oof. What do you make of Joey's performance? See, it was dominating for the second straight year, but I felt like it was different. Like mm -hmm. last year, Larson started up front, was killing him, went to the back, came back to the front, and it was never really in doubt. Now, tonight wasn't really ever in doubt either, but for some reason, it just kind of felt different. I mean, Joey had the best car, and he said after the race, too, his pit crew helped him win that race by winning the pit crew challenge and qualifying earlier in the weekend. But even though he led every lap but one, and he should have if his pit stall was in a different spot, so he quite literally basically led every lap, it just didn't feel like he was in command the entire time. I mean, Denny came up there for a minute, made it three wide. Yeah. Busher was challenging for a little bit. Larson, after he landed from Indy, he was up there kind of mixing it up at the end. So deserving winner for sure. And he was the dominant car to me, though. And it's so weird to say, considering he led literally every lap but one. He didn't feel like the clear cut dominant guy, but you can't argue with the results and you can't argue with that paycheck either at all. Although Joey did say maybe he thought the paychecks should uh, reflect yeah. inflation nonetheless. I don't, but, you I know, don't think he's wrong about that. For a little bit more than that million yeah, dollars that for he sure. got. <laughs> Why not? Race car drivers are people too. They got to make a living. Hey, well, you brought up Kyle Larson, who was last year's all-star race winner here at North Wilkesboro. Larson preparing for the double, mm -hmm. going to race in the Indy 500 next Sunday, then the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. He was in Indy for qualifying. I mean, what can't Kyle Larson do? He finished <laughs> uh, fifth in qualifying, then hopped on the jet, landed here by helicopter, yep. and then finished in the top five in the all-star race. So what do you make of Larson doing the Indy 500, the Coke 600? I mean, he's everywhere, racing everywhere, doing everything, and so good at it. I thought today was wild, and next Sunday is going to be 10 times more wild, right? Yeah. It's just nuts what this guy can do. Earlier in the week, he's flipping a sprint car. He says that he sucks. Uh, he's going 234 in his test and practice sessions at Indy, and he's saying, oh, it's not as fast as I expected. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then he comes, he, he puts it in the fast 12, which is an accomplishment in and of itself for a rookie. Then he puts it in the fast six. Yeah. NASCAR pushes the start time back 16 or so minutes because they want to make sure that everything's working kind of in tandem together. And then he puts it in the top five, so he's starting on the second row for the greatest spectacle in racing for his first time. Again, he's with a really good team, so... This shouldn't necessarily be a shock or surprising, but just the fact that he does this in every new series and every new car that he's in. It doesn't matter if it's dirt, in a late model, in a midget, in a sprint car, in an Indy car, or in a NASCAR Cup car coming here to North Wilkesboro, a new surface, a new tire, when yeah. he had zero track time, and he puts it in the top five. Just slight work for Kyle Larson. The man is a machine, and it was funny because he gets here after he flew and then helicoptered in and golf carted in here, and I ran into him just ironically as he's coming to go to the porta potty. I said, Welcome back. He said, I gotta take a leak. And I think that was like the first 45 seconds of the day that he had alone to himself. So, yeah. man, just what can't the guy do? The guy well, is very just a down machine. to earth, right? If that doesn't yes. tell you a little bit about who he is, so humble sure. despite all the success that he's accomplishing. And we love that about him. Yeah, we do. That's kind of what makes him him. And I think that's why fans are so attracted to him because, you know, people want the Dale Earnhardt, the everyday guy, right? Now, Kyle Larson's not going to be bailing hay on his farm at 3 in the morning like Dale Earnhardt was, but I think people can really relate to Kyle Larson because he calls it like it is, he's really good at what he does, and he's, like Ken Squire said, a human doing superhuman things. There we go. I love that. All right, so we have to talk about one other thing that revolves around the all-star race. Anything else happen? And you. Yeah, so, <laughs> okay, Ricky Stenhouse exits this race after lap one mm -hmm. uh, due to some involvement with going three wide and Kyle Busch. He thinks Kyle is the reason Kyle thinks he's to blame for some stuff. Nonetheless, uh, if you're at North Wilkesboro, you can't leave once the race starts. So oh. Ricky, despite exiting very early, had to stay here. Uh, that meant he waited for Kyle Busch and the result was a, a, an uppercut that you were really involved in. You, you're leaving North yeah. Wilkesboro with some, some, some injuries here. So break it down <laughs> for me. First break down the incident and then um, I don't know, we might have to show a little, yeah. little injury here. A little bruise, a little batter, a little bloody, but you know. You know dedication so though, doing his job, yeah. getting the shot, nothing, and now you're all over social media. I guess, I mean, nothing Neosporin and painkillers can't fix, I'm fine. I am fine. <laughs> it's just wild though, I mean, so we see Kyle's walking out, I'm listening to the radio after the race, and his crew chief, Randall Burnett, says, you might have a visitor waiting for you at the holler, just as a heads up, and we all knew what that was about. So we walk over there, Ricky's literally just chilling like a villain, sitting on the lift gate, 
and Kyle gets over there and they start talking and fireworks start going off in the background like cinematic glory right yeah. so I didn't hear much all I heard Ricky say what was that and Kyle was going back and forth explaining his side of the story Ricky was saying his piece and next thing I know Kyle's saying well if that's the way you see it then okay and after that okay got an uppercut right to the face uh, and somehow some way I guess I learned my lesson don't position yourself in front of or near a tire when there's a fight about to go down because David took a tumble <laughs> fell back behind the tire somehow some way I didn't know it at the time but Kyle Bush fell on me uh, so I cushioned the blow for you Kyle you're welcome <laughs> and um, I didn't stop recording but turns out when I got hit my recording stopped but I got the shot uh, and again, yeah, no worse for wear, a couple bruises, a couple bloody spots, but I'm all good. The fight, though, was pretty wild because yeah. we haven't seen a haymaker like that since Kansas last year and Noah Gregson hit one on Ross Chastain. And even though this is an exhibition race, there's no point, Stro. Don't tell me that these guys don't care mm -mm. because Kyle Busch, and I think what he said after was pretty telling, too. He said, I don't care, and I'm cleaning this up. I'm running just as bad as you. So <laughs> no. clearly, you know, I don't know if they had something going back a little bit, but Kyle's not happy with how he's running. He wasn't happy how Ricky approached it. Right. Ricky's not running well. He's not happy with how Kyle approached it. And he had 199 laps to just sit in here and stew on what happened. And that's what I think makes North Wilkesboro so great, right? right? There's one way in, to your point. There's one way out. And he wasn't getting out until the race was over. And by that time, he thought about what he was going to say, what he was going to do, and he made no bones about how he felt. No. I mean, what a moment to, to end this race. Logano's up here with the million dollar check. You're in the midst of an epic NASCAR fight, yeah, and, and here so. we are. And looking ahead to Charlotte next week, what do you think is going to happen there? I mean, maybe by then the tempers have calmed down. I don't know. Maybe we see oh, no. some more. Maybe Kyle's <laughs> going to be waiting for Ricky at his hall, or maybe. we'll see what happens. But just looking ahead to next weekend at Charlotte Motor Speedway, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, NASCAR's longest race, a crown jewel, obviously. Kyle Larson, the other Kyle, is obviously going to be the big story, right? I mean, right. how is he going to do at Indy? Is he going to get there in time? What's the weather going to be like? Are there going to be any logistical hurdles? Are all the flights and helicopters and cars and all that stuff gonna work out on time you know we have a saying for Joey Logano right Penske perfect I feel mm. like Hendrick's gonna be Penske perfect in their own way with all the timing and everything so Larson's gonna be the story and he's gonna be one of if not the favorite for good reasons Stro. he obviously has won at every single track type in NASCAR he's gonna be one of the betting favorites to win the 600 for obvious reasons but besides him I think you got to look at Hendrick you got to look at JGR the rest of that brigade who have been so good this season, but is Ford back? I don't know. Joey Logano won tonight, dominated. Last week, Brad Keselowski slapped the streak for Ford. Chris yeah. Buescher was running up front again tonight. And Ryan Blaney won the 600 last year to kind of get the schneid done for Ford in 2023. So this could be the start of maybe a changing of the guard for 2024. I don't know if it's gonna be that significant, but the pieces are all kind of in place, Stro, for us to see Ford kind of assert their dominance, at least for the upcoming summer stretch. But Toyota and Chevy, they got some good horses in their stable too. All right, Davey, it's a joy as always to speak with you. We're going to wrap this up so you can get some ice, Neosporin maybe, get yeah, you thank home, you. get you elevated, elevate I'm that I'm okay, elbow. Mom, yeah. I'm okay, I promise, I promise. <laughs> Thanks, Davey. <laughs> You're welcome, thank you.